we live in a world that sees us as, as not normal. We live in a world that sees us as damaged or somebody who needs to be fixed or somebody who is in a constant state of wishing we weren't the way we are, if not outright suffering. That is the nature of being a person with an apparent disability in the world. And when you know that that's how you're seen, but you know that's not who you are, that is an empowering prompt for us to say, well, clearly I can't let the rest of the world define me. There's a lot more to life than bringing someone with a disability. Having a disability, of course, is part of my identity. But so is being a woman, being a mother, a wife, a writer, a consumer. It is all part of who I am. Wherever we go, what we, we found. People are pretty open. How are you doing? Yes, they just care for what the hell. They don't get to look scary. But, but we go, but we go, go, go. For those of us living with a disability, we're just doing what we got to do. It's really not such a big deal for us because the alternative is unacceptable. If we didn't do what we do to function how we function, we wouldn't have a life. Not having a life is not an option, so you do it. It's important for people to know that I don't define myself by my disability, and others shouldn't either. I happen to be blind, but that's not who I am. I like to say that I'm a person who is blind, not a blind person. What's your dog's name? This is Hasta. Hasta? Yeah. Is it okay to uh, pet her? It's actually not. not? Um, she, okay. she has her harness on right here, so that means she's working. Okay. So she's not supposed to really get attention. So okay. She'll just be observing us. All right. That's, That's good to know. And having a service animal causes some special challenges because sometimes when I walk into a store, business owners will ask me to leave. What I think a lot of people don't understand is my dog is not a regular pet. Service animals or guide dogs in general take about $45,000 on average to train. So $45,000 goes into this dog to make sure that she's well behaved. And I make sure, because she's gonna be in public with me, that she's well groomed, she doesn't smell bad, she's not gonna go to the bathroom on the floor. And I wish that more business owners would realize that she's not a separate animal who happens to be with me, she is part of me. We are, we are one when we're entering a store together. She's basically my eyes. It's not legal for businesses to ask what disability gives someone the right to have an animal with them. However, they can ask what service does this animal provide? Is this a service animal? And it's a yes or no answer. And I will uh, be right here whenever you're ready and you can take my arm. Okay. One of the hopes I have when I enter a store is that a business owner or another employee will approach me and offer assistance. And if I choose to accept it, wonderful. But if I don't, I expect, I hope, that they will politely walk away and be fine with that as well. Obviously, the thing that comes most frequently as a result of people's inappropriate response to my disability is embarrassment. Embarrassment for myself, but also for others who I'm with. Especially when I make a new friend, 
um, we're just kind of getting to know each other. If someone, an employee, or even just someone in the public says or does something inappropriate immediately, it causes a significant barrier in my relationship. You've been such a great help. You're very really welcome. Do you need help out? When I'm out and about, the last thing I want to have to do is prove that I'm a normal person to others. One of my top goals is to make the conversation less about disability because that's what everybody else is doing. They're making it too much about disability. They're ascribing too much to the disability. They're assuming that it limits me in ways that it doesn't. They're assuming that it's top of consciousness with me all the time, which it isn't. I had a lot of problems with that. Kids in school, and then I was a bully magnet. Kids just didn't understand how I learned and how I communicated with people. When I was young, I didn't have a lot of friends. And it was hard for me. They don't want to look in that mirror. Uh, uh, it, the fear is like, oh, you know, think that I'm not them. You know, or, yeah, or just, yeah, it's just the fear of the uh, disability, you know. It's the fear of disability. So a lot of the work is really about let's get the disability out of the way because that's really what's causing the problem is your notion of what you think it is and it's actually really just people. The more you get to know me, my wheelchair becomes invisible. And honestly, who you see is me. And like it or not, I am who I am. Okay. I like money. Money is a wonderful equalizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke up for you with the whipped cream, okay? One of the most important differences I had is my credit card. When I take out my credit card, you will be made a help people begin to understand <laughs> okay, so I have an ice mocha for you, and are we doing that frap mocha? Yeah. For, for you or Denise? Oh. All right, fantastic. We don't sit here and say, oh my God, you're in a wheelchair. How did you get up here? Or, my gosh, you can't see. How did you manage to get in here? You know, we don't, we don't do that. Uh, we just... Whatever their problem is, we try and solve it. Companies and people in general should be thinking about how we are inclusive of everyone. Are you treating everybody that you're dealing with, whether it's a business or just in your everyday activities, as you would want yourself to be treated? Can I sit here? I don't really have a reaction to someone coming in on a wheelchair. I try to make my customers happy and feel good, so I go to the person and find out what they want and what I could do for them and welcome them into my restaurant and hope they have a good time. We try to be just a local community restaurant. There are a lot of people who work around here. Time's up. Okay. What are you thinking? And we want everyone to feel at home. Okay, good All choice. Right. Yeah. All right. You just have to be aware. All right, that sounds great. You want some pulled pork with it? There's a blind school nearby here, and sometimes we get a group of blind people, and they need you know, the obvious, help to a table or help with the menu because they can't read the menu. It's just communicating and finding out what the person needs and 
you know, like I said, I love my job. I love making people happy. And so I try to help wherever I can. You have to deal with everybody who comes in your door as an individual. And everybody's going to have something going on. And if you were open and not scared, but somebody who isn't threatened by something different, if I'm different, but really wants to do your job, which is to make somebody feel at home and make the sale, just treat me like you would want to be treated yourself. Forget the disability, focus on the communication. My deafness, my hearing status, or whatever disability somebody has, doesn't matter as long as we can connect as people, as a person. It's really about the connection. It's about the human connection with that person, getting to know what that person needs and letting all the other things just kind of become secondary because that's what they are. I think I want them to understand to interact with me. <laughs> you know, I'm coming there for your services, you know. I'm coming there because I need to get on a plane. So you need to interact with me, not the person that's pushing me. You know, and so, you know, and how, how, how do you interact with the person? Duh, you ask the person, you know. Those accommodations could be a sign language interpreter ready and available for deaf customers. Uh, if a deaf person comes in, they can use this interpreter to communicate. If there isn't an interpreter available, be ready with paper and pen. We're never gonna be perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect when I'm dealing with other people with disabilities. I'm certainly not perfect with people who aren't disabled who I think are being jerks. I've been wrong. We're all gonna be wrong in this world. It's how you deal with all of this that's most important. Someone that's willing to work with me and work around the kinks that may happen. Even though we may not perfectly click, there's got to be some way to work around it and to be able to, someone that's kind and willing to work with me. Anytime you are in service of somebody like that, think of it as a partnership. Take the time to find out what they prefer. Have patient with yourself and with me, life is an up and down proposition. You gotta ride the wings. Thank you. And look what I found. Yep. I'm gonna put it in your bag. You can stay in your head. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't know what to do. This person is gonna talk to me. I don't know what to do, but don't let me as the customer know what's going on in your head. But to be nervous or no, quite know what to do or like to avoid me in the store, because I, I, I don't know, I don't know if I really want to help this person, I may say something stupid, that hurts. That makes me feel like crap. And I think that that's what comes up in that restaurant situation where a server will say, and so what would he like? This happens often. So many of us have stories like this. And the etiquette lesson for that person is you will never go wrong when you address the person with a disability directly. And if they're not capable of speaking for themselves, then the person who's with them, they'll let you know. You want a good tip? You better, you, you better talk to me, you know? Oh, that's common sense. <laughs> yeah. Look, anybody can have a crappy day also, I gotta tell you. But if your heart's in the right place in regards to, hey, I just wanna help, 
and if somebody takes it the wrong way, um, it's not always going to be your fault. Somebody could just be having a crappy day. So for somebody who is in a customer service situation and they've got somebody who's being not so nice, I mean, they got to remember, first of all, is it even about the disability? And that the best solution really for anybody, disability or not, is to try to say, help me understand what you need and I will do everything I possibly can. What better customer service response is there? And if somebody is still going to be rude after you do something like that, nothing you can do about that. People who should know better often don't. And so it's an educational process. It's like me realizing that people sometimes are uncomfortable. And as a person with a disability, if I want to make that a teachable moment, really the onus is on me. I think it's important for people to see that people that have disabilities have families and, and how we're trying to just live productive lives too amongst our challenges. You know, we have to figure out how to overcome them. And so there isn't a one-size-fits-all story or model. It's just being able to have that perseverance and that stick-to-itiveness and problem-solving just to overcome it. I got the card. Yep. How many? Thank you. Yeah, put it in the bag. Do we need one for that? I have a family that is what we call kind of interspatial. Three of us are little people, and my youngest is average size. So I'm always trying to think about it's not just about being little, right? It's not just about what works for me. It's what's going to work for everybody. I have these physical challenges of trying to be able to reach things, and I always will. But it's how can I do it safely? And so every day in my life, I'm always having to try to figure out, okay, how am I going to get what I need? So when I ask someone to say, can you help me, I need to be very positive, I need to be thankful, and I need to appreciate the person that's helping me because otherwise people aren't going to want to help me. So it doesn't matter if you have a disability or not. Oh, can you actually bring it around? Yeah, yeah. So it's that communication of being able to ask someone when you need help and how do you do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I may have a challenge that's just kind of frustrating, aggravating because I really need some help, but I just need to always take a step back and say someone may have never helped someone that's a little person before, and they don't know. So I need to be able to help them through it. 24, please. Right here, down here. I intentionally try to let the people that work in the store get to know me a little bit. So now that people recognize me, they kind of now see that oh, some of the products that I like to buy, they kind of anticipate it sometimes when they see me. Oh, you're looking for the cream cheese, right? I'm like, yeah. When I go shopping, you know, I do think about, oh, I would love for the products to be lower and more accessible for me. And, and intentionally, I've asked for help from people so they can interact with people who have disabilities and that are different than them. And me too. You know, I want to interact with people of all different backgrounds. So it helps create that dynamic of, wow, we've had a conversation. You've helped me. I've said thank you. And we have a smile on our face. And that's what everyday life is about. It's about reaching your hand forward. I'm about trying to create those connections. And if a connection over a, a jug of, let's say, apple cider or it's, you know, some cream cheese, and it creates a 10-second awareness, then I'm happy. You need to do it in a way that's going to help people come alongside you and kind of come alongside the movement, if you will, and what you're trying to accomplish. And you accomplish nothing by alienating people. It's important to keep moving forward. Let's move forward. We're going to hit a bump. Let's keep going around it or through it or over it or under it.